I haven't completely thought this through, but I think it's safe to say that surface grinding problems usually fall into one of three categories. One, you don't own a surface grinder. Two, you own a surface grinder, but you don't know what you're doing. And three, heat. This is a follow-up to the heat treat oven video. If you haven't seen that, well, I'm a little disappointed. At the end of that video, after making and heat treating these parallels, I ground them in with admittedly lackluster results. What should have been a cakewalk turned into a real head scratcher. This is only about three inches long. That's ridiculous. I've since sorted them out. They're well within a tenth. Frankly, could have probably been even a little bit better, but completely usable. I think commercial parallels four or five or six inches long are usually spec to two tenths of an inch. Usually a little bit better than that, especially over short distances. At the end of the heat treat video, when I was getting these weird numbers, I speculated that my chuck needed a dressing, a dusting off, that there was maybe some wear in it. It had been a long time since I'd paid much attention to it. And I did regrind this. I don't know if you can tell. It did have a bit of a dip on the left-hand side, about here-ish. Not enough to cause what I was seeing, but certainly didn't help. To be honest, it was only about one Sharpie mark deep. If you're wondering how thick a Sharpie mark is, check out Tom Lipton's video here. Fun fact, Windex does nothing, but acetone does. Long story short, rookie mistake. I think I let the parts overheat. I almost always use a Norton 5SG wheel. I learned this lesson pretty quick when I first got this grinder. But in that video, for some reason, I was using a different wheel. Although technically this is softer, this is a finer grain. It's a very open structure wheel. I don't know if you could see that. I'm sure you can. Ideally, this thing would want to run with coolant. My grinder, however, is a dry grinder. No provisions for coolant. And if I tried to flood this thing, it would just make an absolute mess. So, like I said, early on, I stumbled onto the fact that the Norton SG wheels cut a lot cooler than your standard aluminum oxide, which is why I've always recommended them in my videos. The one I like the most is this 5SG48. These are high-tech seeded gel, I think. I'm not exactly sure what the SG stands for. But let's talk about heat. What does heat do to the part and who cares if we cook it? Well, as you may be aware, when things get hot, they expand, they get bigger. Now it's much too early for me to try to even think about what thermal expansion versus magnetic chuck does, but at least for shapes like this, I can tell you what happens in practical terms. When this part starts to get too hot, the center sort of bulges up. It doesn't just uniformly scale the way the graphic you just saw may have led you to believe. We get sort of a bump in the middle, a hump, a lovely lady lump. And the grinder will just cut that flat. I mean, what does it care? And when it cools down, we, or rather I, end up with a low spot. Let's mark this up, off camera, and we'll dust off the top with the cooler grinding wheel, and hopefully I can show you the dip. The one in front of the camera, not the one behind the camera. This is a diamond dresser, diamond nib, I'm gonna dress the face of this wheel, bring up a fresh surface, bring up sharp particles. I'm gonna do this quickly and try to get a coarse dress on it. That should get it cutting fast and cool. So first thing, we wanna pick up that top surface. This part is always the scariest for me. I'm just creeping the table up and sweeping back and forth till I see just one spark. At that point, I can dial it in a bit. Here the DRO is showing four tenths. That's probably about right, maybe three tenths. Depends how good you are at picking up that surface. And now I'll just dust it off, as they say. People often notice and ask why I never align my parts with the axis of the machine. That's an attempt to keep the part cooler. If I were to square this part up, for example, the grinds would be continuous from one edge to the other. Turning it on its side just minimizes the amount of time that the wheel is on the material. Hopefully, introduces less heat. And there it is. I just did more of the same until all of the blue Sharpie disappeared. Let's see how we did. There's a closer look at the freshly ground side. That was the original side, or the first side. You can see those scratches from the mag chuck in my surface plate. Well, right off the cuff, I'm nine tenths, eight tenths, seven tenths, smaller than I was before. Let's see if it flattened out. All right, within a tenth, tenth and a half. A little noise in there. I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Which one do you want to hear for good news is that our parallel is now parallel, flat, mission accomplished. The bad news is the part is out of spec. It's too small. 
I mean, technically here it doesn't matter as long as both parallels match, but there was a target I was shooting for. And after all that screwing around, I'm 10 thou under. Remember, I started at 10 thou over, but the boss don't want to hear that, and I'm fired. Thanks for watching.